Welcome, travelers. We're aware that your journey was difficult, but prepare to have your questions answered, for you have been granted an audience with the Masters of Modern. And welcome back to Masters of Modern. I am your host, Alex Kessler, here with my co-host, Ben Bateman. What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Let's talk about magic cards. We've got a bunch of cool stuff to talk about. We, we had a Grand Prix in L.A. We were waiting yeah, for it forever. It was great. It we was did modern. a live cast from it last week. It was so much fun. Yeah, I had a great time. I feel like I had a better time hanging out with people than probably playing in it, though. Me too, considering I didn't play in the event. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm mad at people <laughs> for not yelling at me and telling me to play a good deck versus playing a bad one. Didn't I do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It was a super fun tournament. Everybody was so great. It was amazing to meet so many people that listened to the podcast. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. I can't believe it. It's like I, <laughs> I know that people listen to this podcast, but actually meeting them in person is a whole different experience. Oh, yeah. No, it was really cool. The whole live cast experience also was really fun. The amount of people that just came out to hang out and, and watch us talk to them. For those of you do that... Do what we're doing right now, but in person. For those of you that uh, can relate to my really emotional explanation of Chronozoa as my fourth favorite magic card in modern, you know, hats off. <laughs> hats off to you. Thanks, yeah. for be- thanks for being there for me. So beyond just the GPs, a lot has happened over the last, last two weeks since we last kind of talked to everyone. There's yeah. the GP Charlotte, GPLA, and we'll talk about the top eights on that. And we'll also, uh, you know, Eternal Masters was fully spoiled yep. in the interim. And uh, not a lot for us. No, no. I mean, like they announced, like right when I was coming out, that like this is a set meant for eternal formats, and modern isn't a format that uh, is going to be super helped by this release. And its cards here are not meant for modern; They're, those are going to be for modern master sets probably in the future. Well, I'd like to talk about eternal masters, but calm yourself, my young pyromancer. I, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. We should just give our quick shout outs before we get into the full eternal masters discussion. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> it's, it's so bad. Um, uh, we're on Twitter. Yep, the t- podcast. Yeah, yeah. So follow us on Twitter. We're at the MM Cast. I am personally at Kess Wiley. I'm at Ben Bateman Media. We now have an Instagram. Oh yeah, it has like uh, like nine followers. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Something like Every that. Every time I post a picture, though, we get a few. It's just oh yeah. We posted a lot of pictures from the GP, and then I haven't posted anymore because we haven't done anything magic God, interesting. Is it, but is, uh, is it linked to our Twitter? Like you can you share the pictures from Instagram to our Twitter? Yeah, yeah. It oh. automatically goes to Twitter. That's how we get followers. And that's how you get followers. Uh, oh, but well. it, it's uh, also the MM Cast on Twitter. Or yep. on Instagram, uh, you can follow us on Facebook, I guess. But um, we'll better, we'll get better at, at Facebook. But also, the most important one is Patreon. Yeah, we, we have, have a Patreon. A, we have a Patreon. It's uh, it's and it's it's helping us do cool things. Actually, we just saw if you go to our Twitter at the MMCast, you'll see some retweets just recently of some of our awesome, amazing supporters who just got their swag boxes. We we had to wait and package them a couple months at a time because it's a bunch of stuff when we were sending it to Australia. Yeah. So so the way it works is if you're a uh, U.S. local. Swag box person, you'll get one every month. But then, if you're an international swag box person, you'll get every th- like quarterly. You'll get all three of the items from that quarter yes, sent to you because it's much more expensive to <laughs> ship internationally than in the U.S. Yes, but we don't mind doing it at all. So get on board if you if you're wondering if we did international. Uh, we've yeah, I think we have three three Australian swag boxers, nice. which is cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, big rep in Australia. Um, but uh, but anyway, so yes, we're on Patreon, and and we have a bunch of really cool stuff that we will be announcing. I think over here, just like in the next few weeks, some of you guys met our friends from DMTW, who we are now partnering with and working with to create uh, amazing products. And so yeah, yeah, there's there's you can go to their site. There isn't any product up there right now, but they're eventually going to help us do merchandise that you can buy separately, or you can just kind of check out some of the cool stuff they're working on. It's dmtw.com. dmtwclothing.com. Clothing.com. Uh, yeah, and we're going to have a whole a merch store pull-down tab there. So go check that out. Oh, look at that. We actually have one. Yeah, we're we here. have a page. Yeah, we have a page. There's just nothing on it yet. No, there's, 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 there's like a preview of things that could be coming. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, awesome. So check that out. And those guys are amazing. And, uh, and then, of course, we have a sister podcast. They're called The Command Zone. They do commander content. Yeah, They're on rocketjump.com, just like we are. They also have a YouTube channel. It's sweet. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. have a really cool animated soul ring that comes up at the beginning of yeah, the videos. Yeah. It's sick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super jealous. Yeah. So We're that our mind, animated lightning bolt. Yeah. We'll animate <laughs> a lightning bolt. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, uh, check all that stuff out. We'll, we'll uh, Let's get on to talking. Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, uh, actually, before, one last thing. Uh for all those guys who listened to last week's episode, we did a whole live podcast where we live in front of the studio audience. It, that is the next level. That was kind of a test run for our Patreon. So if you guys have any feedback or anything that you'd want to see us do more in those things or do less of, please uh, tweet at us. Uh, we want to know. We want to get your feedback. Yes, absolutely. So we get better when we do them in the future. Yeah, we plan on doing more of them in the and future. And next week, we should be doing actually a live cast. 
Yep, and, well, a bonus, we'll, and a bonus episode. I think the bonus episode we'll be doing will be probably the sweet, sweet deck tech of the... Actually, we'll, do some, we'll do probably do a few. We'll do a dual deck tech, probably, of the two of the two most MM cast decks yeah. uh, that popped up and did well at the tournament. So. Sweet. All right, now let's get on to Eternal Masters. Cool. So uh, there's not a lot here for us. Yeah. Like, not, not the, the, of all the things they reprinted, the one that was, like, the most needed reprint is Heritage Druid. Yeah, which they yeah. upped in rarity to rare. So not only is it like a rare and an expensive, it set. wasn't uncommon. <laughs> it's a, now a rare. So like I, it's I, I'm I'm gonna eat a little bit of a. I'm gonna call it dry pie, which I think is a reference <laughs> to Game of Thrones from another podcast I ate. But dry pie uh, from the episode we did with the professor, because I was like, you know what, Eternal Masters conspiracy, and maybe you know maybe conspiracy will save me. But they're gonna be they're gonna be reprints for us, and boy. Are there none? Boy, were we wrong. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are some cool cards in this set, and like from a drafting perspective, and from a, uh, you know, I do play Legacy and Commander, and it's really good for Highlander because we have all these new foils that get to play in the format. But uh, from a modern perspective, womp womp. Well, okay, but so like, so let's just remember for a second that the reason Heritage Druid is not going to change at all and is going to stay exactly the same is because it only is played, I mean, it's played granted across mul- multiple formats, it's played in two different formats. Um, but it still is a four of in one deck that shows up in two formats as, as a fringe competitive deck. Um, uh, elves, elves is a in legacy is a hugely it's a competitive huge, deck. Yeah, it's in a modern deck. it's a fringe competitive deck. Yeah, yeah. So though I think it it's, it had spiked. I wouldn't say it's fringe. I'd say it's tier one point five. I think well, it's still a deck that is real. It's when real elves deck. when elves won the grand prix last year, um, it spiked and went up to like twenty two dollars. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's still there. But I imagine it's dropped a little bit. Sure. Um, and this would, in my mind, drop at a few more dollars. I'm guessing Heritage Druid settles right around nine to twelve dollars. Then again, people may get their Heritage Druid from this and start playing Elves because that was one of the hardest cards to get. Yep. And it might just spike again. Well, that's what <laughs> pretty much every Modern Master set when it comes out uh, has that problem where oh, open a Tarmogoyf. Well, now I need three more. So yeah. Tarmogoyf is no more expensive card. Yeah, um, that one. I mean, yeah, like I the said, the only other rare, really, in the entire set that's actually relevant to our format is Wrath of God, who's seen how many reprintings at this point, and well, and how many reprinting have Damnation seen at this point? I know it is weird, right? Um, we, you are, you had a whole conversation on Twitter about that, about the logistics of why Damnation hasn't seen reprinting. <laughs> so there, most Wizards line is that we forgot, which is annoying. Yeah, uh, the kind of the per- like basically Mark Rosewater has gone on Tumblr and said, you know, not everyone at Wizards of the Coast is focused on. Oh, we really need to get re- Damnation reprinted in the set. It's annoying because Gavin Ver he literally wrote an article when uh, from the Vault Annihilation, which sh- should have had Damnation in that set. Period came out. He wrote an ar- uh, basically a point being like, you know, there's cards in here that might not be here, and you know, we're thinking of you know the reason they're not here is because we're planning on getting them out there soon, and. It was like reading between the lines very obviously about Damnation because it was the only real board wipe in that set that wasn't reprinted that should have been. Yeah, and but that's like we haven't seen it two years later. But that's such a silly thing to say because it's like, okay, it's not like it's a similar card to Wrath of God. It's literally the color shifted version. So yes. it's like when you're having the conversation of should we put Wrath of God in another set to reprint? It's just no, put damnation. Well, I think I think here they really wanted to get a foil toxic deluge and they wanted to get another printing of that out there versus yeah. damnation. And I think that's what took out, not necessarily Wrath of God. Remind me, toxic um, deluge is the black card that costs two or something like that. Is but that right? so the, the conversation on Twitter was also so like forever they wouldn't reprint Wrath of God purely from the perspective that it had weird religious connotations. And until they had actual gods in the game, they felt uncomfortable putting out a reprint of that card. Oh, Toxic Deluge is sweet. I forgot about that card. Yeah, it's awesome. Black and two colorless sorcery has initial cost to cast Toxic Deluge, pay X life. All creatures get minus X, minus X till end of turn. Yep, it has nothing to do with us because this is it's not a modern. Yeah, we should point out that this set is like has very little to do with modern, but we've talked about that format Hi- uh, Highlander Roulette on here a lot. Yeah, and which, it's a huge expansion for that. Yeah, I mean it's it's not actually that big. What it really comes down to is there's a few cards here that are getting printings that didn't have foils before. The bigger thing is that most of us play with proxies of like some of the more expensive cards, and this will be a way for us to get those cards in foil without like it being outrageous, or at least get regular versions. Well, uh, beyond that, like. I don't think this set's going to do that much to make foils cheaper, to be totally honest. But I do think this set will make, you know, we we get ten cards that supplement that format. This isn't, but we we should we will eventually do another Highlander episode, but not today. <laughs> um, yeah. But when it comes down to it, the fact that Wizards might not reprint Damnation 
because of the name Damnation seems like it, it might be part of the consideration and it might be one of the reasons they've had some resistance, but I can also like, they've been printing demons forever. They've been printing like, you know, what the, the remember they took out the, the star unholy circle, strength. the unholy yeah. strength star. Like they stopped doing that. Like, I feel like they've separated themselves from that, but I do like, I, I do see that there could be an issue of them being like, they don't want the premiere card to be in a set being, you know, kids in a store being like, oh, man, I just pulled a Damnation. Or I just really want to open Damnation out of this pack. Yeah, it is It is weird that, like, it's strange that, like, that's... like there's, like, Bonfire is... of the Damned was in Addison yeah. Restored, so it can't be that big of a... Unless there's, like, been a recent push from Hasbro. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, like, every every bit and part of me is, like, understands why Magic is best as a PG game. But it's also, like, at what point is that sort of, like push a little little further than it needs to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yep, like, yep. like, damn, who cares? That's not... We, we are a PG podcast, and I can say the word damn on this. It does not make me feel like I'm violating a rule. Right. Well, yeah. I'm, and we're, I mean, we're both... In, I'm Jewish, so damn doesn't even have a... Yeah. But, like, you know, darn exists. Darn is a word. So darn. there is... You uh, want them to make darn nation in the set? Yeah, that'd be sweet. <laughs> 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 Actually, if they ever do an unglued three... Darn Nation? Having Darn Nation in it could be kind of amazing. <laughs> darn Nation? And Especially if it gets printed before Damn Nation ever gets printed. <laughs> and Darn Nation would cost Black Black 3, and it would be destroy all creatures. They might be able to be regenerated. and <laughs> <laughs> Like just some, yeah, like the exact same thing, but slightly. There have to be some weird rule. They like all go to the exile exile zone destroy, from destroy, AWOL. Destroy most creatures. <laughs> <laughs> they might regenerate. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> just be really yeah, I like that. All right. So Wizards of Poise just got in trouble for this <laughs> thing. All right. Uh, so beyond that, I'm gonna read some of the like high profile uncomments. That is one thing, like the one place we did get a lot of somewhat they weren't the problem is like none of them are like really needed, but reprints right. where like young pyromancer is that uncommon. Yeah. Wall of omens, Wall of omens intangible yeah. virtue. Uh, Flint Hoof Boar, which yeah. is the you know the the like bigger yeah. curd ape. That's like the M13 Flame Jab. One. Like to be totally honest, I don't have copies of Flame Jab because I just wasn't around back when Retrace was yeah, around. Yeah, it's fair. Um, and I am super excited to cast Flame Jab with uh, um, the enchantment that when you cast a spell to your graveyard does two damage. Oh yeah, Burning Vengeance. Burning Vengeance. Burning Vengeance and Flame Jab seems like the sickest thing on the planet. Every yeah. land is a lightning bolt. Uh, Harmonize. Yeah. Blood Artist. Which is which sweet. is which is legitimate rancor, which is definitely a card that probably yeah, needed to be need reprinted more soon. More copies. Curd yeah. ape, which I guess you know is a thing that's at common. Uh, Faithless looting, um, goblin char belt, goblin char belcher. Yeah, yep. Yeah, um, Isochron scepter, which is like another card that's seen a few reprintings. It was in the Is it dual deck. Yeah, it just like that card has like never really been able to make a large impact. It's funny because it abrupt decay just wrecks it. Yeah. Um, Goblin Draw Belcher is a card that, you know, is always probably as as soon as they print away like one more like a land grant like card in yeah. modern, yep. it'll get much better. Um, it's nice to see sinkhole in modern. It's it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Relic of Progenitus, which yes. is actually a card that like surprisingly is more expensive than I thought it was. Yeah, re Relic is just good. I mean, look, we've we always say this. Anytime ever that you have a, a catch-all answer that's an artifact. It can any color can play it, and it's actually good. It's and, and it cantrips. Yeah, it's probably decent. Always gonna get played. Yeah, yeah. That's why Spellskite's insane because every deck can play Spellskite. Right. Every deck can play Relic. Yep, I agree. Uh, so uh, yeah, so that's kind of the. Yeah, I think you're pretty much dead on. I mean, some of the the only the other there are ones, other cards that are like the shrines. Like there are other modern legal cards, but none of them are. Yeah, or like Keldon Marauders or something like that. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah, I mean, pretty much like the kind of thing you'd, you'd be looking for that like the Modern Master set is going to do next year um, absolutely is. Which So that's the one thing. So I, I did predict that we'd get Elves and Merfolk. So we did get Elves as an archetype. So we got a lot of the Elf free prints. Yeah. We didn't get Merfolk. Which leads you to believe that Merfolk will be in Modern Masters next year. Or if it's not a Modern Masters next year, it might be. Yeah, it has to be. Like okay. we eventually need Curse Catcher can't be a $30 card. That sounds insane. Curse Catcher's not $30. No, it's, it's $17. Curse Catcher is $17? Yeah, it might be 20 It was $23 at one point. Oh, my goodness. It might have gone back up now that it wasn't reprinted in Eternal Masters. I wonder how many of those I have. Um, I need two. Huh. My Murpho deck is currently using Judges Familiars as, like, pseudo-proxies that if, at worst-case scenario, I'm in the tournament and I need to just have a real card in the deck... I feel like I have. I feel like I have four or five curse catchers. Okay. I was playing. I was playing in standard at the time. Yeah, I found out because I was in the middle of the draft. I'm like, oh, I need a curse catcher, and then we like count, looked everything up to do the math, and it was like, oh, this is twenty three dollars. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it's you know, 
Mara Regery, Curse Catcher, these are cards that have now won two GPs. Silver Gale. A, a GP a year they've won, and yep. they're both... Yeah, I guess haven't been reprinted since Lorwyn. I know. I love, and I always love when people. Th- this is this is the thing about modern, right? So people ask you, "I want to get into modern. What's the budget deck? How should I do it for inexpensive?" And you and I always have the exact same reaction. It's like, do you actually want to be competitive, or do you just want to have fun? Because if you just want to have fun, there's decks you can play that are solidly tier two and three that you can get for cheap because they're cheap. They're usually knockoff versions of a better deck, but they're still interesting. We've talked about the green stompy green deck, stompy before. deck, the blue white, the blue white ETB deck. Yep, yeah, there's the there's the uh, we we I played against uh, one of our one of our listeners over the weekend, and he was playing like the um, uh, Legion loyalist, you know, eight eight uh, eight whack. It's called. Oh yeah, you know yeah, what I'm talking yeah. About? yeah, 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 yeah. Right, it's like a bunch of like the, the goblin, the goblin eight rack deck. Yeah, it's um, and it's it's cool and it's fairly. And the, and goblins is I saw a few goblin decks and they were pretty, you yeah. know, pretty powerful the weekend. I do think that a new budget deck that should be on people's list because I think it's only going to be budget for s- a little bit of time. Yeah. is the mill deck that just did well or the 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 grand architect deck, which I know are decks that you want to talk about. Well, the problem with those, I mean, yes, I hear you. They're not actually as budget as you sure, budget as you'd sure. think though, because glimpse the unthinkable is like a twenty five dollar card. Yep, that's true. You need four of them, so you start a hundred bucks plus the lands because they're multicolor. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, what I was gonna say is the the hilarious part is anytime you say to someone. Go build this good budget deck that's competitive. As soon as that deck does well one time, it ceases to be budget. There right. was a time right, when right. Merfolk was a budget deck. Yep. It's just that every one of those cards, because the deck has now been consistent enough for a long enough time, it's has top gone up. almost every GP and has won two of them. Yeah, like that's just not budget <laughs> anymore. I mean, the same was true for Burn for a long time. Burn, it's, it's won two in the last year because the GP it won last year was yeah. during the summer. So this, like, yeah, two in a year. That's 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 it, a significant deck. We it, actually had a friend. Who came up to you? You were playtesting Merfolk <laughs> during the during the morning on Friday. You can, you can call him out, <laughs> and, Andrew Brown. <laughs> he's a person that's been on the front of the cast. He walks up and he's I'm, I'm like literally playing Often a game guessed. with Merfolk, and I'm not even playing in the tournament because I was doing a coverage piece for Machinima over the weekend, so I didn't actually have like the ability to play in the tournament. But I was sitting there playing Merfolk with someone, and Andrew walks up. You're playing that this weekend? I was like. No, I'm actually not. He's like, you're playing that? It's a bad choice. I was like, Andrew, I'm not playing this week. And he's like, you shouldn't play that. Don't play that. Just wasn't listening to me at all. Yeah. And then bad just, deck. It's a bad deck. Yeah. And then it won the whole thing. And then <laughs> I like called him out and I saw him a few days later and he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so, I mean, speaking of GPLA, why don't we go through, I, I do want to go through the top eight for GPLA and Charlotte. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's some sweet, sweet, sweet decks. So what, what do you have? Uh, but well, we yeah. should probably just talk about the Merfolk deck first. Yeah, so we're there. Slime and, slime uh, well, well Corbin Hausler just did, and we, tr- we tweeted it, and we, mu- we can actually probably link to it uh, in the episode this week, is uh, um, he did an updated primer on Merfolk. It's a really good read. And I'd it. say if you're interested in playing Merfolk, he's one of the premier uh, people that's been behind the deck, him and, him and the professor specifically both, and he has a pretty good breakdown of like the best way to play the most recent version. Um, is there anything interesting here that you see that you think should be maybe called out? Um, I mean, I guess if you've listened to this cast and you sort of know how the deck works, um, some of this stuff, it, it'll all make sense to you. I mean, okay, he, he's playing one Relic of Regenerus in the main deck, which is just a hedge against the fact that... Graveyard uh, decks were everywhere. Yeah, Abzan Company deck was really big, and uh, you didn't want to get you know, you know didn't want to get choked off by Living End or something like that. This mm-hmm. deck doesn't interact very well with those, so I guess the one Relic is, like, fine. It's another one drop that cantrips. Seems okay. Mm-hmm. I, I think something that's really important is that he was only playing... Uh, he was playing one tide binder mage in the main and one in the side, and none of the instant speed bounce a yeah, tap yeah, creature yeah. merfolk. I, I, like that was, and part of that is because Splinter Twin's gone. Yeah, but I, I thought that was so interesting because talking to a bunch of merfolk players over the weekend, it seemed like that's how you deal with the Nahiri deck. That's how you get rid of Emrakul. But the Nahiri deck wasn't good. I know, at, but there was a lot of we. Ha- I did a whole conversation about how that was like sort of the big. That was the hot big bad going into the weekend. That well, you wanted to but if the Emrakul is also tapped because it has to be a tapped creature, you're already lost as merfolk. Because they've already annihilated six of your, your oh, spells. Oh, that's true. It has to be a tap creature. Yeah, so you're better off killing them quickly because they have islands and you have unblockable five fives mm. than you are. Because it, it also for them to get Nahiri off, they need to get the turn six, turn seven. Yeah, but you're not really dead because at that point, that deck probably is playing control against you. And if you have like a vial, if you have a vial or whatever, and they go and with the annihilator trigger on the stack, you flash that guy in off of a vial or even just cast him. Mm-hmm. You know, you lose your lands. You probably lose a couple creatures. Or, you know, some combination of the two. But more than likely, they don't have much going on. They've probably used most of their resources. Emrakul's back in their hand. You probably still have two or three creatures left on the board. This is, But this is also a deck that, like, I feel like 
Jeskai has a bad matchup against Merfolk in general, just because you're a deck filled with creatures that can just attack Nahiri. Yeah. Like, how, how does Nahiri get to six how, or to eight? How do you take it up twice without the Merfolk deck just kind of yeah. steamrolling you? True, true. Um, I, but I agree with you. I think that is, I definitely think that's interesting that he's not playing any. I mean, the other stuff in the main deck, um, everything here is pretty standard. You've got your four yeah. ofs, you have the one tide binder. I like four tech edge in the sideboard. I think that's really interesting. Yeah, the one phantasmal image main deck has become pretty standard. I think two Kira main deck, I, I've seen Kira in sideboards for a long time. I know I've seen uh, her. Almost all Morphic play one. I think two is interesting, but I don't. Yeah. I think that's a hedge again against the blue white red decks. I think that's a better hedge against them because your bigger problem is all the removal they have, uh, not necessarily that they can get Emrakul on turn 12. <laughs> also, one Vapor Snag um, is. That's pretty slim. Well, I think one Vapor Snag, but three Dismember. Yeah. So they, they, he definitely went on the, I need to kill creatures more than tempo them out. Yeah. And I think part of that is just there are more threats that you need to murder in this format in right. general. Yeah, and I, I mean, that that's against like the Eldrazi decks that are still playing Reality Smasher. You like you really don't want to bounce Smasher, right. discard right, a card, right. and then have them replay Smasher. That definitely. sucks. Um, so yeah, I think that's all... That's all cool. Uh, sideboard stuff j or um, uh, mana base stuff. Everything's pretty standard. We've seen the Oboro place in the clouds a bunch of, or Palace in the clouds yeah. a bunch of times because it's a hedge choke. Yep. And so is Wanderwine Hub. Um, somebody reading this list might get confused because it has white, but it doesn't matter. That's not the point. Right. Right. The point right. is, it's just open your inner opening hand. You're always going to have a Merfolk in hand, sure. so it will always be an untapped blue source. Um, and by the time you don't have a Merfolk in hand, if you, you don't, don't have a Merfolk in hand and you have to play this tapped, then you have bigger problem. You just top deck the land, so who cares? What <laughs> do you think about the two gut shots on the sideboard? Makes sense. Yeah, I don't. I don't have Bob was everywhere this weekend. Like, there's a bunch of kill, I, I, kill I like birds, kill it's, it's really good against collected company decks. Good against infect. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think gut shots always a strong play, especially if you need a removal spell in a deck, which Merfolk does. Um, so it it it, it beat um affinity. Yeah. So um, I kind of I mentioned this in our last cast for the preview. I think affinity was definitely the deck to play this weekend, more than any other deck, because when affinity does so bad four weekends in a row right that's the time to start playing it because i you know all day friday all day saturday morning i was hearing people talking about how you know i, I went down to two stony silences or one stony i only cut down and maybe i'll play like a wear and tear instead of a stony silent like all of everyone was like lowering their graveyard hate because affinity did bad for the last four weeks this is so funny because what andrew said i was like it won the tournament he's like affinity was the deck to play and he's like he, he topped that kirkle's recall affinity was the deck to play it's like that's like such the like well okay matches are won and lost by like top decks all the time sure. so yeah but but you're, to your point that's like exactly what he's saying which is kind of true which is like yeah i mean like if i'm playing a legacy tournament and dredge hasn't done anything for a year and no other graveyard deck has yeah. done anything that's the tournament to play dredge because no one's running four graveyard hate spells which is what you need to beat dredge <laughs> agreed yeah fully agreed um so yeah, so that uh, like I don't think anything in the Affinity list was super crazy different. Uh, they did play one Master, two Etched, which is just a good hedge against the fact that there are more colorless spells out there than there used to be. And now Ethan Brown is the kid who was playing it in the finals, correct? Uh, and I believe Ethan Brown is a 13 year old, and he's the youngest kid to ever make a finals of a Grand Prix. I thought he was playing Tron. Was he? I thought he was in the finals. I mean, I you look that up while I go through some other. Okay. There was one Abzan Company list. But this, and, and which is impressive because this was the deck everyone had guns for. This and the Jeskai deck yep. were the two decks that everyone was like, I'm ready to beat this thing. Um, the only real interesting card out of this that I can see is the, uh, it was playing a Corsair of Crew Fix in the side. He is 13. And four Tide Heller Scholars. Uh, 13, youngest kid ever make a Grand Prix Finals. Oh, wait. Stephen was, Brown. Oh, wow. Playing Affinity. Uh, okay. Four Scholar. I like, the I like the sound of this. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the, the Abzan Company deck that, yeah. that got there was playing Four Scholar out of the side. Sweet. Um, and one Farika God of Affliction. The sideboard is almost more interesting. Like the main deck, and that's kind of how these yeah. decks roll. The main deck is pretty set upon. Like you play one Spell Scout, you play one Fiend Hunter, you play one Murderous Red Cap, you right. play one Urza Pontiff, you play one Scavenger Goose, and everything else is like threes and twos of. Um, but when you get to the sideboard is when you get kind of the sweeter tutor targets that these decks get, and definitely a sweet list here. What do we think about Sculler? Just because I've talked about this card a bunch recently on the show, and I think it's underrated. Everybody likes Tide Hollow Sculler because it's just like a fun card. It's one of those cards that I always talk about how it like it's it has sick with Viscerus here. Yeah, well, and it also it's one of those cards that has a lot going on. So like in the way that I love Deathrite Shaman, it's like uh, Sculler is really interesting for a lot of reasons, right? So it's it's, it's a, a zombie. It's a zombie. It's, it's an, an artifact, artifact creature. It's a colored artifact creature. It's a bear. It has like. It hasn't entered the battlefield trigger. It has exile as part of the trigger. Right. You can respond. Like, it just does a lot of very cool stuff. Yep. 
Um, and it has a really, really sick foil that you can get of it, I think, called <laughs> <laughs> it's like an FNM foil. Um, I don't know. I just That card is interesting. It's like, you know, I've been trying to build zombies with it and whatnot, but it just, um, I think it's pretty underplayed. I don't think people try to build with that card as like, just like the solid two drop in decks very often. And I think there's a lot of design space to, to make that card mm-hmm. more interesting than it is. Uh, and I was uh, wrong, actually. Uh, Ethan Brown was playing four edge champion. Got it. That was the uh, there was actually two affinity lists in the top eight, which is what it, you know affinity was the deck to play this weekend. It yeah. did very well. That's like also usually pretty common. There's usually one to two. There's there's only a mix of master ethereum and as champion depending on like when Eldrazi are around. As champion was terrible. Yeah. For yeah. Eldrazi and Eldrazi are still around. Speaking of which, because this one of the sweeter decks was Bant Eldrazi from GPLA. Did you just use master of ethereum correctly? That's like the first time that's ever happened on this podcast. Um, I'm like reading it. <laughs> I have the list in front I of me. I guess it's the only reason is because you were able to reference Etch Champion in the same sentence. Maybe. So if you hadn't been able to, you would have just called Etch Champion Master of Ethereum. Probably. Which you do 100% of the time. Yeah, maybe. You don't, you don't know me. Mace, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Maester adult. of Ethereum or something. <laughs> but a deck running for Eldrazi Displacer, for Mattery Shaper, for Thought Not Seer, for Reality Smasher, and for Drowner of Hope did make the top eight. It's so interesting, right? Like people, everybody asks this question: Is is uh, Eldrazi still going to be a thing after the banning? Well, I think there's a red, green, and a blue, and a ban Eldrazi list. I think both of them are completely playable decks and will be forever. Like getting Eldrazi Temple is so good still. Yeah, I mean, it's still <laughs> it's still a soul land. It's the and only like, soul land in modern. And, and, and what's basically happened is that all these cards are cards that are decent by themselves. Like. Yeah. Worst case scenario, if I play a Reality Smasher on, or a Thought Nazi on turn four, it's still really good. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's still stopping my opponent from winning the next turn and a 4-4 body that survives Lightning Bolt and Abrupt Decay. Same as, like, Mattery Shaper is basically just a Kitchen Finks meets Blood Braid Elf. Like, these are all cards that are pretty decent yep. um, that just, uh, yeah, I, I see it just kind of doing its thing. 100%. You get to play, you can play uh, Ancient Stirrings also. Like, Ancient Stirrings is one of the most underrated cantrips in the game. Yeah, we, lo- we love Ancient Stirrings. We talk about um, that card a lot. Um, yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, I, I we, we talked a lot about how much we like the Eldrazi cards and how great it is that these cards are still going to be C, like C-play and modern. It doesn't feel oppressive mm-hmm. and unfair. It feels balanced and powerful and on the correct curve and doing the right thing in modern. Like, it's correct that you should have to play a Four Noble Hierarch in the deck that wants to power out powerful things early. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's far more correct than playing eight lands that lets you do it, right? Yeah. That's and you know even even having to play the one bird of paradise like I think that's really really cool so um, I like that deck a lot everything I, else uh, what I was the, the the last three were kind of the fair decks if yeah. you can call Tron a fair deck but so you had Green Red Tron um, which like I have Ugin's ban hurt but didn't kill it they're just playing uh, Sanctum of Ugin's now which is like definitely worse but still fine yeah um, and they're not playing Emrakul anymore. Uh, which is, I think, great for everyone. <laughs> yeah. uh, Corey Burkhart, who was, was on the cast and actually did a deck tech on the Grixis control deck, um, he also took it. Interesting, four Ancestral Visions, no Jace. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting, isn't it? Um, this is a very different list, actually, in a lot of ways than the list we talked about when he was on the podcast. Uh, the, obviously, the biggest difference just being the Ancestral Visions, but um, yeah, yeah, and no Jace. I wonder how you get. I wonder how you get to that point. I wonder what the testing suggests. That Jace my guess is, is that the ancestral visions are taking the space of Jace. They're similar. They're all like turn four. This starts getting me real value um, cards. Though I, I I did assume that Jace and ancestral visions go together better than Snapcaster Mage almost because you can discard yeah. the the later ancestral visions. Completely. But the biggest the biggest thing that jumps out here to me and the biggest uh, change where where this really truly is a control deck and those Grixis decks from a few months ago with Jace were like control slash velocity decks mm-hmm. um this deck plays four crypto command yeah that's like a hard thing to do in modern that's like you there's a couple decks that have gotten away with that i think scape shift for a long time scape shift when it was blue red green yeah it would play four cryptics but like that's not a thing you see decks get away with very often sure it's, it's that's like just but that's also probably i think the format slowed down a little bit the, yeah. this this field was really like affinity was the fastest deck all of the other decks got really hated out by um abzan company decks like a, yeah like Zoo, like Zoo wasn't a good deck pick for this weekend. Affinity was a good one, but Burn and um, El- uh, Infect were also probably bad choices for the weekend. Yeah. And that allows you to play Cryptic Command. 
Yeah. That's like the weekend to do it. And the last one was Jund. Uh, there's nothing super. They, they are playing a Griv Lava Mancer in, this, in the main and a Kitchen Finks in the main, which are both kind of sick main deck plays. They're just like, um, they're just, what they really are, just sweet cards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, enough, I mean, the one engineer is explosive on the side. But yeah, for the most part, it's kind of just a stock Jund list um, other than those two changes. Kalidus is still doing rat work. Like, Kalidus is really good. Yeah, Kalidus um, is totally a thing in modern now. I do I do like how the format, because it's slowed down, is actually people are running less Brub Decays. Brub Decays is now a two drop where, you know, terminates a three there are three terminates you mean the two, oh. two of the three yeah yeah two yeah. of them three of um yeah absolutely and i think that pretty much that was the top eight of la so let's move on to gp charlotte let's see what's going on uh so the winner of this was ad nauseum tendrils or not yeah. tendrils sorry not tendrils which, which <laughs> ad nauseum though which once again to andrew brown's credit was the deck that he played okay yeah he was playing ad nauseum <laughs> yeah sure um Definitely a sweet deck. Doesn't use the graveyard really, so it, it dodges all that, but it kind of is like a version of Storm that can play through graveyard height slightly better. Four Spirit um, Gods, a Lab Maniac. Like. Yeah, this one was interesting because it was playing a Lab Maniac, the Lab Maniac version, where the ones I've seen generally are the ones that are playing the. Oh, this plays Lightning Storm too. It's playing both. All right, never mind. Showing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this deck. Uh... Deck has been around for a long time. It's one of those decks that sometimes is really well. And sometimes it's terrible matchups, and uh, it, that has a lot to do with how many thought seasons are in the format. It's also playing 62 cards in the main deck. This one was. Yeah. No, that's a mistake. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. They, there uh, are two cards that aren't supposed to be here, and I forget which two. I think there's only two Seacrum Coasts. Oh, really? Or maybe two of the Temples. There's something that's wrong. Uh, the Wizards made the announcement. They just haven't changed it. Oh, got it. I forget which one it is. Okay. It's one of the, like, it's only playing 20 lands. Got it. Um, I don't know which. It's probably two of the Temples. Yeah, I just don't know which one. Um, it is sweet that between the two between the two top eights, you have like a very very diverse sixteen. Oh, the decks. format's wide open. It's awesome. Um, yeah, look at these decks. Well, and, and GP Charlotte. Well, so GP Charlotte was weird. So this is something we have to say is yeah. like their computers got really screwed up halfway through the tournament, and so yeah. all pairings were random. There was no seed based pairings, and so you ended up with a format that had a lot of different cards. Yeah, like, 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 like GP Charlotte's around, is so diverse. I think diverse. it was around one o'clock. Their uh, computers crashed. Their all the pairing software crashed. So, like, I would say that the 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 format image uh, was so diverse out of GP Charlotte, partly because of that issue. You right. had less of the best decks playing the less decks. You just had decks who, who whatever deck random no holds barred, like whatever deck can do the best and win the most, yeah. got to the top eight, which is an interesting way to do formats. And I, I I saw a lot of people saying this should be how the way it's done. Which it would be interesting. It does make the format it more diverse, hands down. You don't have just like, I'm playing Infect, I'm going to beat most of my opponents, and then I'm, my deck is good against other good opponents. Like, you can't metagame as well, yeah. which does mean that the format ends up being a little bit more diverse in the end, I think. Hmm. Um, well, I'm sure nobody was happy about the way this went down. If they liked No, it. yeah, <laughs> the fact that it happens against everyone's wishes. Uh, there was a... Let's just go down the list. I don't know what the order here, because they don't have them there, but... Uh, Naya Company with playing Domri Raid, which is sweet. Yeah. Which makes sense. Like, I, I'm actually surprised there hasn't been more company d Domri Raid decks because they both require just playing more than 25 creatures in your deck. A high density. Um, yeah. And, you know, this, I mean, this is pseudo zoo, uh, less combo, more I'm going to kill you, but it is playing one tireless tracker. <laughs> Yeah, my Which one. Which is sick. <laughs> yeah, well, that's like a card everybody had their had their eyes on this weekend. But I don't I don't know if they did. I mean, Talos, well, like he, he's like a he's a good rare in standard, but I don't think I've saw one person mention Talos. And this is the only deck it, I've seen Sam playing Black? it. Sam Black wrote a whole article on like Tracker. This is John Boldings. Yeah, I'm saying, but to Tracker. Sam Black did write an he, article on Tracker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tracker sweet, but no, uh, I was I was saying um, my one problem. By with the way, Sam Black did make top eight, not playing Tracker though. What did he? He played. Time? He played Death Shadow. Death Shadow Aggro. Oh, yeah, that's that seems like his style too. Um, um, no, no. My thing with uh, with the Naya Company deck, and you just said the thing about Domri Raid and, and Company. Here's my thing with Company. And this is just my personal attitude. I've talked about this on the podcast before, but your, you, I don't want to play a, a, a collect Company deck if I'm going to play it that is just trying to, that is just trying to like win off of creatures, but has to play one drops and collect the Company. So you have five copies of mana creatures in this deck. Right, and you have four, and you have three copies of Collect. Yeah, but company. turn three Collect companies like with Meliripod, like because of that, they have a turn three infinite life. Yeah, but they have a combo. There's no combo in this deck. That's the, that's that. That's what this I'm saying. Is, this deck, the combo here is just kill them with four fours. Yeah, no, I, I get that. <laughs> I'm saying, but like when 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 you can fire off a company and you can mm -hmm. hit your combo off the company, it makes it makes like everything getting that a turn earlier make far more sense. When 
getting two creatures here is what's going to happen every time. But like essentially, but while I mean, while Nakatl does go along, I mean, yes, it's a one drop, but it like what this has done is it cuts down its curve. Still, it's all all three drops are below, uh, but it's a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, no, I get that. I just, I mean, that's just that's just when I look at it. That's the way I feel about it. I don't, I don't, I don't tend to like. Well, the thing with Birds of Paradise and Noble, Noble Hierarch you're forgetting is that they're really good with um, stuff like Kessig Wolf Run. Right, which right, they're true. running here. I mean, because because obviously you, you have a bird and and a Hierarch to get you turn to Neither Reliquary or uh, conversely, turn to Domri Raid. That's, that's why you play Domri Raid is because you're playing five mana creatures. So mm-hmm. you can hit that on turn two. Um, but it's just, that's, that's, that's the only reason that I think you don't see more of that. Um, okay. Yeah, that would be my guess. Um... All right, so ad nauseum, Naya Company. Uh, another Jun list. I, I, do, I do think Jun was good this weekend, mostly because Jund is always good. It can kill things. Yeah. So whatever you're doing, it's got 55% of the field, so if you're good at playing Magic, you're probably going to have a good weekend. Uh, slight difference with this one is it's playing four Dark Confidant. Right. And uh, only two Scavenging Oozes. Yep. Uh, next. <laughs> Jund is Jund. Yeah. Uh, so there was a Bring the Light Scapeshift deck. So this is a deck that's kind of been around and someone needed to find a good field for it, but it plays four Bring the Light and three Scapeshift. Mm. Um, and is just, you know, playing a card. The Hunting Grounds was in the deck. Hunting Wilds. Search your library after two forest cards and put them in the play tapped. And then, sh- but it was kicked. They become three, three green creatures with haste. Oh, this card. It's sweet. I forgot about this card. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know this card existed. You didn't know this card existed? Nope. Did you not play during Planner Cast? No, very well. Oh. Love Planner Chaos. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Worldly, Worldly Council was also in the deck, which is the the domain, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number <laughs> of basic land types, and put one of those cards. That's so sweet. Yeah, this deck is really cool. Um, and for Cryptic Command. Yeah, it's just five color, five color Scape Shift. And it plays four... Cr- yeah, this, I mean, Scape Shift decks are the ones that play Cryptic that Command. They usually do, yeah. yeah. Um, Epic. I like it. Yeah. Uh, Sam Black's Death Shadow deck. This, I mean, this has changed barely at all from... The Pro Tour? The Pro Tour. Yeah, this deck is... I don't think this deck has a lot of room to change because it's so much about like all your spells are either really good threats. It does have Step Links, which is kind of a sweet play. I also don't think... Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think the one with the Pro Tour played for Mishra's Bobble, right? I think it did. Did it? Yeah. Hmm. I might be wrong. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe if just for so it's you're you're doing. Tweet it at us. Tweet at us if I'm just blatantly incorrect. You're just doing it be, because of become immense. The reason I don't think so is because the cards that you filled your graveyard with in that deck all had life pay. So the street wraiths and the uh, Gitaxian probes sure. made sense. But I don't remember. I don't think that Steplinks was in that deck either. The one of the pro. No, yeah, the Steplinks is an ad. Steplinks and the Mishra's Bobbles, I'm pretty sure are ads to this deck. Okay. Um, I guess I could be wrong, but that be would be my guess. Um, another John deck. So two John, two two affinity so far. Uh, a Kiki Chord deck. So this is a, a this is the Nahiri deck that made the top ten. Yeah. Top top sixteen of the two between the two GPs. Uh, two Nahiri the Harbinger, because uh, it can just find Kiki Jiki or find the piece you're missing when it ultimates, and it's just as good as cycling through your deck finding the pieces you need. It's a decent removal spell. Um, this deck is very similar. It's kind of you know this is the world we lived in with Birthing Pod. We had. Birthing Pod decks that were the Malira combo, and then we had the Kiki combo version. Yep. And one was more combo heavy and more tutor heavy, and one was more of a mid-range deck that also had a combo built in. Totally. And this is kind of the same thing. Both are now using Cord. Uh, this doesn't have, obviously, Collected Company, but it's using Nahiri instead of Birthing Pod, yep. basically. Uh, um, this one's sweet. Do you see the Bant Knight Company deck? Yeah, totally. This has got the Retreat to Coral Home combo. Yeah, right? it's yeah. awesome. Everybody's wanted to make that combo work. So someone did. They top eighted with it. Yeah. This is now a deck. <laughs> uh, officially. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. Um, is there anything interesting you notice about the retreat? I mean, like basically it's just a collected company deck. Uh, like an, a Bant collected company that's been around. It's playing four, two Courser in the main. Um, one Kitchen Phoenix, a bunch of one ofs, one Tarmogoyf. Yeah, it looks pretty standard to me. I mean, it's like, I guess standard for whatever that means. Just like this isn't a deck that has really like made waves. But um, yeah, I mean, it plays 22 land. Like, you know, I, a lot of these decks, a lot of these decks that are playing uh, mana creatures play 22 land. It's not really that uncommon. Um, you know, Pithy Needle on the sideboard, Kataki. Eidolon of Rhetoric is cool. R- rhetoric? Did you just say a card wrong? Is Did you r- just do a me? Are Did you sure you it's rhetoric? Yeah. How do you know? Because that's what that word is. Rhetoric? Rhetoric is a word. Well, so is rhetoric, like rhetorical. Where is it? I'm looking for the card. R is in the sideboard. H E T O R I C. Yeah, it's rhetoric. Not like empty rhetoric. Are we wrong? Producers. Producer right? in the room. We have two people. Uh, I'm getting Kessler. the vote. Kessler's right. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, he's playing because rhetoric isn't a word. Rhetorical is. He's playing Eidolon of rhetoric. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone on Twitter rejoice. Alex Kessler finally said a word right, and Ben was wrong. Um, this is this is a this is a new day. <laughs> I said and I said master of Ethereum correctly. Oh man, master everything's coming. Everything's coming up, Kessler. Bizarre world today. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean this card is interesting. It's it, it's one of those weird enchantment creatures from Theros, but it's clearly in there for Storm. Um, you know, players yeah. can't play one more, more, more. It's also pretty good against Infect yeah. and a few other decks. Like There are decks that this is pretty decent again. Uh, I used to bring these in pretty heavily, actually, against Splinter Twin when I was playing. I had a Mardu, uh, Walkers. Mardu Walker deck, and, like, it was... Because, like, basically, if they can only play one spell a turn, you're able to then... They can't counterspell everything, so all your removal is just live for the whole game. Well, also... Um also, you you bring it in against that, but then you also can bring it against any of the any of the prowess decks, like the like the, yeah, the, yeah. the Sam Black deck. Um, Plus, it's a one four, so it blocks Swiss exactly, all day. Exactly, like it, it does a little bit of everything you need. Yeah, I, I agree. It's yeah, sweet. it's a sweet sideboard. I mean, uh, the twisted images. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. I mean, it's not like crazy, but you know, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen a lot of rhetoric all that many times. <laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, that's that's that was the two top eights. I, I, it's awesome how diverse this format is right now. Yeah, I think Wizards like did a. We finally got into a point. Uh, where the format's kind of leveling out. It's an interesting start to the PT- pre-TQ season. If I was going to a pre-TQ this summer for a modern one, I'd definitely be looking at these two tournaments and seeing what did well here and seeing if there's a deck that kind of works for me. And, like, brew something sweet, because you totally can right now. That's yeah. the fun thing. Like, just, just, just remember, just remember, look at these top eights, and remember that, like, really fast decks that are, like, linear and have, like, a, a very, very uh, clear through line of how they're going to kill you are the things that you need to be on your radar the very most. Whether, whether that means... Remember, you're, you can get stomped or steamrolled by Merfolk. Remember that Affinity can completely just house you, or that Infect can, you know, hit you on turn three or four. Yeah. Um, remember that that's you can't build anything too slow to contend with that. Beyond that, well, um, I mean, like the mistake. So I took the Tesserator list that we talked about a few months, like a, a finely tweaked version to the GP. And the reason I did bad is, and I realized I should have drawn in my first match that I won just to get into the draw bracket, which you should never do, and never. it's always a hindsight thing you think about doing, but. I basically got put against all these decks like Goblins and Infect that like our bridge is terrible against because right. they're one ones that attack. So it's really hard to defend against that. Where, you know, I, I tested against the Nahiri decks, I tested against Collected Company, I tested all these decks that have these big beefy creatures that I was ready to fight, and then I got paired against Goblins, Infect, Zoo, Tokens, and like just got steamrolled all day. I mean, look, it's a hard format, okay? Like it's it's gonna be wide open. Like yeah, you're yeah. always gonna it's really interesting. Play. You could you could look at these sixteen decks we just we just listed, and there's no way you could come up with the pick that would be good against the field. If that's the, if you're going up against those sixteen, there is no deck that's good against those sixteen decks. It's impossible. There's too many good decks in there, and they do too many different sure. things. So yeah, you got to just go in with a sense of it, and also know your deck. You got to know your deck really well, mm-hmm. and you didn't know that deck that well because you only played it for a couple weeks. I actually do it pretty well. There was no point that I made mistakes. <laughs> I lost because <laughs> aggro one one creatures are hard. All right, so. <laughs> That's the cast for the week. Yeah, that does it. Yeah, we'll talk to you guys next week. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at the MMCast. Make sure to check out the Patreon and all the sweet stuff you can get there. Yeah. Uh, we'll be sending out the Patreon rewards next week for this this month. Yes. Um, surprise what it's going to be. Uh, anything else? No, I think that does. Just check out the, yeah. The oh, Twitter. make sure the command zone. Check out, oh, Instagram. We have an Instagram. Follow us there. We'll be posting cool pictures there. That was one thing that, like, I, and I think our mission this summer is going to be to do a little bit better at this than we have in the past yeah. through video content and streaming and other things is, like, our faces aren't known by anyone. People yeah. know our voices. I get recognized yeah. more from my laugh and my yeah. sure, sure, sure's than I get recognized from what I actually look like. Um, Did you get asked at any point in the, in the weekend if you were Ben Bateman? Because I got asked. No. Alex, I got asked about Alex Kessler like twice. Oh, really? Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, I did have one person come up to me like and show me their collected company list and just like freak out about how cool that they were showing a collected company yeah. list to someone. Yeah. I thought that was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So thanks for listening, guys. We'll talk to you guys next week. Bye, guys. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to the mmcast at rocketjump.com. See you later. Alligator.